But let's get some more perspective on all of this. David Doyle is head of economics at Macquarie, and he joins us here in studio. David, it's nice to see you. The fight against inflation, it goes on and on. What do you think is making it such a complicated one? I just think a, a big part of it is how elevated the level of inflation that we're coming from, you know, has been, right? We haven't experienced this since the early, uh, since the early 80s. When inflation was in its double digits, and to come all the way back down from you know seven, eight percent year over year to try and get down to two is proving challenging. And I think in particular the challenge is the last mile. So going from seven to three and a half or seven to four, it, I think will prove to be a lot more straightforward than getting from three to two or from four to two. The, the challenge beyond that, though, is that you've got all of these interest rate hikes. You're starting to feel that in the broader economy. Uh, we heard from Royce Mendes there, who seems to be leaning against the idea of another rate hike by the Bank of Canada. What's the central bank to do at this point if they know that there are those cooling signs, but the inflation fight is not over? Yeah, I think it's a, a really uh, tricky and unenviable, unenviable position that the central banks are, are in right now, particularly the Bank of Canada, uh, given how elevated inflation is, but also given that we're starting to see some softening on, on the growth side. And, and so what is your, um, what is your anticipation of uh, what happens on interest rates uh, from here on in? I guess the same uh, question would, would, would include what do you think is going to be happening to the Canadian economy? You've, you've talked to us a lot this year about your worries about what would happen in the housing market in particular. Right. So for, I think for the U.S. Fed, we suspect that they're done their rate hike cycle and, that, and that's, you know, at, at its completed stage. The last hike, we believe, occurred in, ju in July. Mm. In Canada, we think the, um, the balance of risks are a bit different just because there's more evidence of more entrenched uh, inflationary pressures. We haven't had the same relief in wage growth. We haven't had the same relief in underlying in inflation that they've had in the U.S. So we'll see, I think, the Bank of Canada's decision later this month will in large part be driven by the data that we get next week, the Business Outlook Survey and, and the CPI for September. Um, but for now, our base case is that they will proceed with another 25 basis point hike uh, in, in October. That's interesting yeah. because, you know, we've we very quickly, because of our shorter duration mortgage market, seen the impacts and the cooling effect on the economy. But, but when you um, speak to that inflation challenge in Canada, what are some of the differences uh, with this country versus the U.S.? I mean, you, you talking about the, the, the wage pressure as, as the primary one? So I think there's more evidence that uh, wage growth has started to subside in the United States than what you've seen in Canada. In Canada, we continue to remain quite elevated in the 5 to 5.5% five year-over-year year range. And actually, given that we have a higher unionization rate, the unionization rate in Canada is roughly 30% compared to roughly a 10% unionization rate in the U.S., mm. that could be partly behind it. But that also suggests to me that potentially wage growth could remain firm in, in coming months, which could provide the Bank of Canada with an added reason to, to move, even if the Federal Reserve is on the sidelines. So I guess I'll ask sort of a follow on forecast yeah. question. Given all of that, let's assume that the Bank of Canada at least cannot sort of declare victory on inflation yet and, and might have to raise rates again, knowing that it could hurt parts of the economy. Where does the economy end up next year, in your opinion? Yeah, so, so to be clear, I think a rate hike is the lesser of two evils right. for the Bank okay. of Canada, right? I mean, clearly there are signs that growth is slowing. We think Canada's economy may already be in a recession, and if it's not already in a recession, it will likely enter a recession in 2024. Uh, but I think for the Bank of Canada, allowing inflation and wage growth to become more entrenched is the greater evil. So even if they think that another 25 basis point hike could make that softening in the growth outlook even worse, um, I think they'll likely to proceed with it. You talked about that business outlook survey. Um, what are some of the things that you would hear in general from companies or industry that would be an indication to you that there are noticeable signs of, of change coming? Uh, so I, I would suspect like what we would be wanting to see, right, if you wanted to see that there was reduced inflationary pressures from that business outlook survey, you'd be looking for firms, you know, planned price increases over the next year. Um, the expected time with which firms expect inflation to get back to 2%. So is it 2025 or 2026 or 2027? Um, their own inflation expectations uh, will feed into it. So I think there's a variety of measures that we'll get from that 
survey, I think it's released on Monday, mm. that could speak to the outlook and potentially the outlook, uh, you know, what the Bank of Canada might do down the line. And just finally, can we exclude from this conversation the uniqueness of Canada's population growth, which obviously brings a lot more potential people into the labor pool, not to mention the fact that, you know, and this is a story in the U.S. as well, we see them debating it in Congress all the time, the level of government spending, is that something that we can't directly associate with the inflation challenges as well? Uh, well, I think everything's all intertwined, right? And in, in economics, there's always feedback effects between the others. And I would say the one aspect of this significant population surge we've seen in the inflation data has been strong rent inflation numbers, right? And that's another contrast with the U.S. In the U.S., market or offered rents have subsided or come in, you know, or started to flatline. Whereas in Canada, the market rents continue to show a steep appreciation, largely reflecting the population growth that we've experienced over the last year. All right.